Whenever I shared about my workflow for processing articles, books, and more into Obsidian, you may have noticed that I glossed over the specifics a little bit and just focused on everything after they get into Obsidian. And that's because until recently, last night in fact, I'd been asked not to share too much about a product that I love and use heavily. One of my favorite tools for learning in general and one of my favorite companies, Readwise, just gave the go-ahead for sharing in public a little bit more about this awesome new product called Reader. I've actually been using it for over a year now. I first started using it in August 2021 and I am super excited not to have to keep it a secret anymore because it is awesome. A caveat before we continue though, it is not officially launched yet and probably won't be till next year. However, you can sign up for a waitlist now and it is out of that private beta period. So your chances are higher than ever, but I still wanna show you how awesome it is. So here's what you need to know. First, what is Readwise? Readwise was already a service, a platform that lets you take your highlights from a variety of sources like ebooks and tweets and podcasts. But there were still a few sources that were missing, namely articles. There wasn't really a good way to do it within Readwise. So what I did and what many other people did was to use another service like Instapaper or there are a bunch of other ones, maybe like Pocket and that kind of thing. And we would use that to highlight web articles articles and then maybe put them into Readwise and then from Readwise get them into Obsidian. As you might imagine, that wasn't exactly ideal because I still had to pay for two services and have two different accounts, but I still did just because I really liked that automated workflow. Reader is the answer to all of that. With Reader, I no longer need Instapaper or any sort of read it later app. It's hard to say that it's a read it later app because it's also like a newsletter app and it's a podcast app and it's a tweet app. So it's basically this awesome thing that connects Readwise to way more sources. Let me get right down to it and show you how it works. Part of the reader system is this Chrome browser extension. Now I'm using Chrome because that's a browser that I use, but you can also install it on other browsers. And even if you use a browser that isn't supported they do have a JavaScript applet that you can use. But once it's installed, you just click on this yellow R here and it says save to reader. Now you can then leave this and then maybe choose to do it in reader or you can just start highlighting here as well. You'll see I have auto highlighting turned on. That means that from now on, whenever I go back to this page, I can come in here and then start highlighting and all of those highlights will be synced to reader. So let's say that I want to highlight this thing. I just highlight it normally by clicking and dragging, it comes up in yellow. However, if I'd rather use it as an actual read it later app, then I can just have it saved in Reader and then come back to it later. Here it is in the Reader app. Reader is a web app that you go to and you use your Readwise login. And we'll see that how to write great flashcards is already the top article in my inbox. We are right now in the library view. One of the cool things about Reader is that everything has a keyboard shortcut. I mean everything. You can navigate this entire thing without using your mouse if you wanted to. So in this view, this is kind of like where everything lands. Think of it as your email inbox. And all of these things here are either articles or books or emails or many other things. So this is the one that we were looking at. And if I enter into that, you'll see that everything comes up. First, there's a cool outline on the left. And then on the right, there's a bunch of metadata like who wrote it. At any point, I can type O and it's going to bring up the original article. One of the problems that I had with Instapaper was it didn't quite capture things like images or anything that was in line other than text. And so I often had to go back to the original. I don't find myself doing that too often with Reader, but it's certainly cool that I can just head to 
this one and maybe copy the link in case I want to share it with somebody. So going back to it on Reader, I can navigate using the arrow keys and we'll see that's the highlight that um, I did while I was on the page and I can keep going down here. It automatically scrolls up. See when it goes enough down the page, it kind of all goes back up so that it's always nice and, and centered for me. And I really love that the images are also brought into here. So let's say I want to highlight this heading and I'm just toggling that with an H and then maybe I want this forgetting curve in my Obsidian Vault. So I'm going to hit H on that and the image is highlighted. Now I'm not quite done with this, but I want to move on with the rest of the demo. So I'm going to hit L to move it to later. And this later tab here is where it's going to live until I get back to it again. And this is the library. The next one is a feed. So I'm going to show you how to add a feed. I've got my feed here. This is the RSS feed to my site and I'm going to add it. And it says it's adding the newest five items. And here they all are. These are my last few blog posts. If I go into one of them, unfortunately this one is a video and so they can't play videos within here, but I can always hit O and it'll take me to the actual site where I can play that video. If I want to archive this, just like in Gmail, I'm going to hit E and that's going to archive it. And then I can select which one I want to open next, but I've really seen all of this, these before, of course. So I'm just going to hit archive for all of them. You see, I could archive it even without going into it as well. So I already showed you this view, which is the library and this view, which is the feed. If at any point you want to search for something, then you just hit slash and then you can type in something. So like maybe I want to do that second brains one and there it is that what most people get dangerously wrong about building a second brain is actually here. Exit that. Now let's go on to the different sources that we've got here. These are all numbered, so you can just mouse over these to see the keyboard shortcut. If you're familiar with the app called Superhuman, I believe one of the people that are working at Readwise is actually from Superhuman. And so it is very similar in terms of the user interface and just being able to navigate the using keyboard shortcuts. So let's hit three and this is the article section. And this is kind of mocking the same thing that the library had, except this one is just for articles. So the things that are in library are everything that are from the different sources combined into one view, but you can also go one by one into each source in case you have different workflows. In articles, you can see the inbox layer and archive as well. You can sort by date saved or a bunch of other things. And you can browse through the articles here as well and see the metadata update on the right. The next section is books. I actually read most of my books these days on the Kindle, whether that's in my Kindle app on my iPad or on my phone, which is a Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 3. With the Kindle, all of those highlights are automatically bypassing Reader and going into Readwise to be sent into Obsidian. But this book section is great because it also accepts different formats like EPUB. I just got this awesome EPUB from a creator that I admire, Elizabeth Phillips, and it looks pretty good. The experience is not bad. I mean, you do get these weird things like the page numbers are here and then her name and that kind of thing, but you can still highlight everything. And I showed earlier how you can just hit H to highlight the entire paragraph, but you can just highlight normally as well and that'll go through. You can also add comments. I rarely do that and add tags. I never do that, but maybe you will. And you can also copy text and disable auto highlight if you don't like that things are automatically highlighted when you select them here. The next one is emails. That's number five. When you get into Reader, you'll be given this special email address and anything that you send to that email address from the email address that you've used for your Readwise account will end up here. This is my Mailbrew replacement because I used to like Mailbrew because it was a separate place that I could have stuff sent to, but now I just get it sent to my Readwise email. The other thing is if you have some newsletters that you've already signed up to using your own personal email, 
email address, then you can just forward them all into your Readwise email address by setting up an auto forwarder rule in Gmail or whatever email client you use. Let's look at this one by Matt Devella. He has a newsletter called Slow Growth and a course called Master YouTube that it's based on. Let's say that, that I want to highlight this hedonic principle. You also see an outline here so you can skip to the part that you're more interested in. Then you can archive it when you're done. Number six is PDFs. I've been actually using this for surprise, surprise RPGs. This is a PDF that I uploaded. I'm going to get rid of the sidebar here by pressing the right bracket and I'm just increasing the size here. And you can highlight directly on the page. This is a page from the PDF of the of the RPG for The One Ring, which is an RPG based on Lord of the Rings. So let's say I want to highlight this degree of success. It's kind of difficult to see because of the color of the background, but if you look closely, it's actually highlighted in yellow. And let's say this whole thing is important. And I'm going to add a note rolling a success and I'm going to hit save. Without doing anything, it's somehow been able to parse this PDF and also show the section chapters here is actually really useful and you can jump to any of these. If you don't want to see that, then you can hit the left bracket and it's just a, you and the PDF, which is also pretty cool. Here's something that is more work related and I can zoom in here, turn off the sidebars and zoom in and maybe I'll highlight something like increasing organizational efficiency through standardization, all of that mumbo jumbo. So it works pretty well even in three column PDFs. By the way, this is why for those people who have commented saying like, hey, why don't you use this PDF plugin in Obsidian? This is why, because I've just been using Raider. And the next one is number seven, which is the tweets inbox. Now, before this, I was already sending tweets to Readwise, but they were bypassing Reader. Now everything goes through Reader. So let's go and see this in action. So let's pick up on this thread that was highlighted by my friend Marie about the WCAG guidelines. This seems like it is a tweet thread. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit this share button and I'll send it via direct message. You can also do a public tweet, but you know, I don't necessarily want to broadcast that to other people. And I'm going to select Readwise, which I'm already following and you should probably too. And I'm going to say save thread and hit enter. It says that the direct message was sent. And when I go back to Reader, you'll see it didn't take that long before this tweet thread showed up in my tweets inbox section. So if I enter that, all of those tweets in the thread were there and it's all like formatted as if it were an article. Sometimes it's really frustrating to have a tweet thread there. And I used to use like Unroll Me or those other thread aggregation apps, but now Readwise does that in the process of putting it into Reader. So now I can go through every tweet and highlight as usual. So I'm going to highlight that, let's say. Going back to the main dashboard here, and the last feature is shortlist. Now there's nothing here yet because this is so new that I haven't used it yet. I read up on this and shortlist is intended as a feature to help with a bit of information overload. When you have an article or basically anything that goes into Reader, you can hit S to kind of tag it with shortlist or you can manually tag it with shortlist and it'll end up in this separate shortlist folder. Let's try that out. So if we go back to something in our inbox, let's go to this prime factorizations wiki article that I imported from Brilliant. I'm going to hit S and let's see that was moved to later. Now, if we go into shortlist, oh, okay. So that prime factorizations article is already there. Let's try something in emails maybe. I haven't read this yet, but let's see if I can do it without even going into it. I'll hit S. Yep. That looks like it was moved to later and then it should, yep, it shows up in shortlist as well. So this is kind of like a way to star items. This plus button here is for creating a filtered view. 
There is this reader filtering guide that has a bunch of parameters and string ones that you can use um, and operators. Oh, you can do greater than, less than. Oh, this is cool. You can even do short reads. Show me all documents shorter than 10 minutes and in later. Okay, well, I'm going to do shorter than 10 minutes and maybe in inbox. So let me try that out and in inbox. Okay, this is really cool. So you can filter based on length. Oh, the problem is that, for example, these PDFs don't come with a length. And so it's coming up as if they are shorter than 10 minutes to read. I know for a fact that the one ring core rules is not that. So I can change this and type not PDF. Okay, that seems to have worked. It looks like everything in here is not a PDF and they do look to be under 10 minutes. So that's really cool. If you only have a certain amount of time, then you can use this to quickly go through stuff. I'm actually going to save this view for later. Let's save this as quickies. And it got saved right here and now it's number nine, which is pretty cool. So I can do one to go there and nine down there. All right, let's look at this command palette. From this command palette, you can do pretty much everything. There's easy shortcuts for triaging, later archive, you can delete. Oh, you can apply bulk actions as well, the help functionality. But let's go to apps here, because if you're in doubt about how to use different things, you can go into here and this is like your one-stop shop for importing from any type of document or source. Readwise can also import from Instapaper and Pocket if you are already using that. Here are the browser extensions and here's how you would get connected to Twitter. And you can even just upload files epubs and pdfs from here i've also been using reader on my mobile devices on ipad i typically just go to the reader page because when i open it in safari then all of the keyboard shortcuts work and then on my android mobile there is also a mobile app for it which i've found useful for like nighttime reading but of course you don't get the cool benefits of keyboard shortcuts now i mentioned that this works with obsidian this is the Readwise official plugin. You should already be using it because it is awesome, but if not, you can install it. And then I would suggest that you configure the resync frequency to the earliest, which is an hour. I think by default it comes as manual, but I like for it to pull it in automatically. If you want to trigger a manual sync though, you can still do that by hitting initiate sync. Let's look at some of those things that we highlighted. Let's look at the second brain one. What most people get dangerously wrong. Okay, so it's, isn't it cool that it has the picture? Okay, it's a little distorted, but hey, that's still pretty cool. I also want the accessibility one. Again, a little distorted, but hey, look, it still brought in the highlight. Now let's look at the one from the PDF, which was the run, one ring core rules. It comes in as an article. I guess they don't have a PDF type yet. And let's look for the one where I put in a note. So it has here new highlights added September 6th. That's today. And this is the highlight that I just did. And here's the note rolling a success. If you're interested and you're not using Obsidian, this actually does work with a bunch of other apps like Rome Research, Notion, and Evernote. But I'm a little biased towards Obsidian. If you're as excited about this as I am, the first thing that you have to do is to sign up for for a Readwise account. Go to readwise.io slash Nicole and you will get double the trial so you don't even have to pay anything to try this out. And then you can go to this page which is readwise.io slash read and then you can sign up for early access. You'll have to enter your email address so enter the email address that you used for your Readwise account. If you go to this part of the page, it's me. I do want to say though that I noticed in this frequently asked question, will this affect the pricing of Readwise? It does say that when we officially launch, we'll likely adjust pricing. This is totally understandable. I would expect that their prices will increase. However, they do say that they won't increase the price on your existing subscription if you have one. So if you ask me, Readwise is an awesome product anyway. I talked about it way before I even knew about Reader. That's actually how I got into the beta is because even before the Readwise official Obsidian plugin, I'd written up this Python script that integrated Readwise with Obsidian and used the Readwise API to bring in highlights into Obsidian. 
but I think you don't have anything to lose by trying it out for free. And then after you are accepted for Reader, then you can go into this app section and then set up all of the integrations that you want to use. You don't have to use all of them. And then if you don't already have it, you can then install the Readwise official plugin to Obsidian to just complete the entire picture. Reader has dramatically increased the value of Readwise for me, a service that I already loved and had been using for years even without Reader. Reader is so good that the same day that I started using it, I canceled my Mailbrew and Instapaper subscriptions, and that was over a year ago. I haven't looked back. The best part about it all is that it all goes into Obsidian. I feel like I'm a shill right now, but I really love this product, so much so that I was really excited to make this video. I've already made videos about my processing workflow from Reader into Obsidian using the Readwise official plugin, so check out this video to see a little bit more about that process. If you'd like to try out Readwise, and I really recommend it, then check out this link. And if you sign up using it, then you get double the trial length that you would normally get. Thank you for watching. Jenkuye!